Dragon Ball is a massive series, and as such fun, can always be slightly confused as to where to start or what to watch. Today, we're going to help you find the proper way to watch Dragon Ball series in chronological order. So get ready, because it's going to take a while. Bardock's Tale. Logically, one can think that the first step to watch Dragon Ball chronologically would be to go for the original Dragon Ball. Nevertheless, there is something that you can do further to understand Goku's tale even before the beginning, and that is to watch Bardock's special episodes, A Lonesome Final Battle, The Father of Z, Warrior Son of Goku, who challenged Frieza, is a TV special released in 1990, which shows Goku's father, Bardock, facing Frieza. Initially not canon, but later has been adapted into the main timeline. Dragon Ball episode of Bardock is also a special released in 2011, which showed a different fate for Bardock after facing Frieza. Not canon also, but entertaining either way. After this, you're ready to start Goku's journey. Dragon Ball. The original Dragon Ball anime has a total of 153 episodes, and basically deals with Goku's childhood on Earth, and how he meets Krillin, Bulma, and many other of the essential characters we all know and love, to the point of fighting up Demon King Piccolo, as well as Piccolo himself. There is also an alternative way to enjoy the series, although not fully, and also a very condensed one. Dragon Ball Curse of the Blood Rupees is a 1986 movie that works as an alternate telling of the beginning of Goku's journey, when he meets Bulma and seeks out the Dragon Balls. Next, we have Dragon Ball Sleeping Princess in a Devil's Castle. It's a 1987 movie that again works as an alternate telling, but instead it deals with Goku's and Krillin's training under Master Roshi. Dragon Ball Mystical Adventure was released in 1988 and is an alternate telling of Goku's meeting with Tien and the fight against Tai Pai Pai. Finally, the Dragon Ball Path to Power was released in 1996 and works as a tweaked and condensed retelling of how Goku meets Bulma, Roshi, and the Red Ribbon Army. Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball deals with the Goku's adulthood, introducing fan favorite characters such as Vegeta or Trunks and also some of the most iconic villains in the Dragon Ball franchise. For instance, Freezer or Cell. The series ran for a total of 291 episodes, which indeed included some filler content. The most obvious way to enjoy Dragon Ball is to simply watch all the episodes. However, there is some extra stuff that can be done as well. Dragon Ball Z Kai. Some people may not want to watch all of the 291 episodes of Dragon Ball Z. Therefore, Kai can also be a very plausible alternative. Kai ran for a total of 158 episodes and was divided into two major parts. A standard first one and the second one called the final chapters the reason behind it being shorter than the original series is that it can actually follow the manga more closely thus massively reducing the filler content as well as altering the narrative pace dragon ball z movies and tv specials there are no dragon ball z canon movies other than the final ones however they can be watched due to how enjoyable they are and also because you can easily introduce them in the Dragon Ball Z timeline without any major issues. Basically, I'd recommend watching them in the following order. Between the Saiyan and Namek saga, we have DBZ Dead Zone, DBZ The World's Strongest, Dragon Ball Z The Tree of Might, Dragon Ball Z Lord Slug. Now, between the Namek and the Android Saga, I suggest watching Dragon Ball Z Cooler's Revenge, Dragon Ball Z The Return of Cooler, and between the Android Saga and the Boo Saga, we have Extreme Battle, Three Great Super Saiyan Special, Dragon Ball Z Super Android 13, The Face in the Face of Despair, The Remaining Super Warriors Gohan and Trunks, 1993, Side Story, Plan to Eradicate the Saiyans, Dragon Ball Z Broly The Legendary Super Saiyan, Dragon Ball Z, Bojack Unbound, from the Buu Saga onwards, will show you everything. Forget the years cares with Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Z Broly Second Coming, Dragon Ball Z Bio Broly, Dragon Ball Z Fusion Reborn, Dragon Ball Z Wrath of the Dragon. Now, this is after the Buu Saga. Yo, Son Goku and his friends return. Dragon Ball Z Battle of Gods 2013, Dragon Ball Z Resurrection F 2015. Now, finally. Dragon Ball Super. Dragon Ball Super is the current Dragon Ball Saga, and contrary to what some people may believe, it doesn't actually happen after DBZ. When does it take place in? In between the Majin Buu Saga and the end of Z. Basically, there is a notorious time skip that happens between the end of Buu Saga and the actual ending of Z, and Dragon Ball Z Super is slotted right there chronologically. Dragon Ball Super ran for 131 episodes. The manga is still ongoing, and it deals with the events of the Super Saiyan God, meeting Beerus, and Goku and Vegeta getting to expand their powers further beyond the Saiyan constraints. It is important to note that even if the Battle of Gods and Resurrection F movies are under the Dragon Ball Z label, they are actually represented as the beginning of Dragon Ball Super as well. Dragon Ball Super movies. There are a couple of movies under the Dragon Ball Super label, both of them being canon. 
And these are the following. Dragon Ball Super Broly. This movie is right after the Tournament of Power. Then we have Dragon Ball Super Superhero. Somewhere around the granola arc, still not in the anime. Only manga, but the movie does not deal with the manga issues, so it includes really no spoilers. Super Dragon Ball Heroes. Super Dragon Ball Heroes consists so far of 44 anime episodes, and not a single one of them is canon. What? Is this anime, I bet you're asking? It basically exists as a promotional content for the video game Dragon Ball Heroes, only available in Japan, although with a very limited release in the West through Super Dragon Ball Heroes World Mission. The Super Dragon Ball Heroes anime is supposedly placed after the Tournament of Power of Dragon Ball Super. Nevertheless, the timeline does not really matter for the show since it portrays the fight including characters like Gogeta Super Saiyan 4 and Bardock Super Saiyan 3, and all kinds of transformations and fusions that the fandom can imagine. So just to clarify, this anime is completely optional and does not add anything story-wise. Now, Dragon Ball GT. Let's get this straight. Most people don't consider Dragon Ball GT to be canon for obvious reasons. First of all, Akira Toriyama was not directly involved in the development of this series, being an anime-only story. Second of all, as Dragon Ball Super progresses, it gets together to actually maintain the timeline in which Dragon Ball GT takes place. And for the record, the series is after Dragon Ball Z chronologically. Thus, if it were canon, it would actually go after Dragon Ball Super. So, Dragon Ball GT ran for a total of 64 episodes, and it basically dealt with the negative essence of badly used Dragon Balls. The introduction of the Super Saiyan 4 and Goku looking to revert back to being adult after a Dragon Ball wish turned back time for his body. I'm sure that surprisingly to many, Dragon Ball GT does actually have some TV specials. This one is called Goku Side Story. The proof of his courage is the four-star Dragon Ball. was aired in 1997 and works as some sort of prelude to the very last chapters of the series. 